everybody. Welcome to Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 212. And Aaron, where are we? We are at Ancora Vino in the littlest Little Italy in downtown San Jose. We're actually right down the street from the SAP Center, and this is a great place to come before the game. Maybe not so much after because they close after the late game, but a um, uh, great place to go for wine and beer and food and open to all ages. So thank you for hosting us. And uh, Ryan is here with us, and thank you for being here. And Super Producer Jason actually uh, chowed down on a couple slices of pizza. It looked fantastic. So uh, also a great place to get some pizza. But Aaron, uh, the reason we're here today, uh, the NHL draft lottery is happening in what, like 15 minutes, just yep. moments away essentially. And what's going to happen here is we're going to determine the fate of the San Jose Sharks pick uh, for, for this upcoming uh, draft here. So uh, we spent the entire season uh, just doing <laughs> poorly, right? But the, the whole Waiting. thing that we were talking about for this season was, you know, what's the goal? What are we trying to accomplish with the season, right? We're watching to see how Eklund produces, right? right. How he grows and everything else. Right. And then uh, we skipped everything else and said, and the draft lottery, right? So <laughs> like now that's done. Now we're here, we are here. right? So uh, what are you, uh, obviously we know what you're hoping, but let's just go ahead and put it out there in words. What are you hoping uh, is gonna happen here? I'm hoping for not too much disappointment. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot on the line here, I guess you could say, because Celebrini is by far the number one prospect in this entire draft. There's no, there's consensus number one. That kind of doesn't always happen every year, um, but Celebrini is the number one uh, prize here. The second and third are even kind of up for grabs, and then everyone after that, it is just, uh, everyone has a different opinion on who to take. So it's, It sounds like everyone has a different opinion on two through ten, actually. Yes. It seems like it's just everybody's got, you know, if you're taking a forward or if you're taking a defenseman or whatever else. You know what, the nice thing is, though, again, and I don't want to, I'm hopeful, right, that the Sharks are going to end up with the first overall pick. However, if it does not go our way, uh, and we've talked about this before, the Sharks could use some good blue chip uh, defensive prospects. Absolutely. And some of the best players in that top five, top 10, yeah. are all defensemen. Yeah. So even if the Sharks don't end up with the ultimate prize, what everyone's saying is the consensus number one overall pick in Macklin Celebrini, I think that no matter what happens today, the Sharks are still gonna come out ahead uh, with, with a very good prospect in, in a position that they can use. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm even hoping that Let's say they do get celebrating and they get the first overall pick. That second pick that they have of the Pittsburgh Penguins that they use on hopefully a, it, whoever's left, if there's any good defenseman that maybe have slipped down a little bit, um, I think that would make me a little more happy and, and hopeful for that defensive core because right now they don't really have that blue chip prospect. Now, yeah. at that, what, 14th round pick that the Penguins have, if it doesn't move, um, it's not going to be a, a blue chip prospect really, but it'll be a good, a good player that'll probably be second, third, pairing guy, but a guy who will make the NHL. You know, the nice thing about uh, the 14th pick, though, is that there's a lot of teams that have a different idea, again, of what it is that they want with their picks. The guys that are picking five through 10, uh, they may have very different uh, guys that are on their board, right? So a, a lot of them were saying, you know, a lot of the players that would be the second best player on their list are gonna be available all the way through up until pick 10, which means a lot of these guys that could be going a lot earlier in the draft are probably gonna keep falling, right. right? So there could be a very good player still available at 14, we don't know. Falling compared to what? Like, well, who's, whose list are you going off of? I'm just everybody's list. Yeah. Everybody's list is different, it's gonna be my very point, different. right? There's gonna be some teams that are going based on need, of positional yeah. need. There's gonna be some that are just gonna take the best player available because their prospects are just terrible anyway like the Sharks, so who knows, uh, it kind of could be like the year that Eklund dropped to seventh yeah. overall, where he was expected to go in the top four, I thought, that year. Mm -hmm. So uh, expect something like that. Hopefully Sharks fans will be excited for whoever falls down that low. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know these guys too well, so I'm not quite sure, but um, I, I'm excited to see. And, and um, the other part of the lottery here is the Penguins pick, which yes. is right now slated to be 14th overall could possibly, if they win the lottery, they can move up 10 spots, which means they would become fourth overall pick. Right. Now, the Penguins have 72 hours to after this lottery to let the Sharks or the NHL know if they're gonna keep that pick. And if they do, then they send the Sharks their first round pick next season, which would be unprotected. And the Penguins, I don't believe, are gonna be getting better than they were this year. So <laughs> uh, I almost kind of want the Penguins to Maybe not win, maybe win the second lottery, the second pick. Okay. So the Sharks would keep the first one. I don't know how it would work, but basically <laughs> have them move up, you know, not, not take, take right. away the first overall pick. So if they get Celebrini and the Penguins' first 
round pick next year unprotected, I think to me that would be a huge win for the Sharks. Best case scenario. I think uh, any which way you cut it, the Sharks are going to come out with a nice big win today. Um, it's it's a, a momentous occasion here. Now, the Sharks have never pin, uh, picked first overall. They've no. only picked uh, second as the highest, and that was Patrick Marlowe. Now, they've had a player that was a first overall in Joe Thornton, uh, same draft year, 1997, as Patrick Marlowe, having them mm -hmm. both on the same team at the same time. Pretty awesome stuff. But again, Sharks never really had the opportunity to pick uh, first overall. So um, again, it would be a shame to see that uh, not happen today. Uh, we, we've seen what a second pick, uh, a second overall pick looks like. Patrick Marlowe, absolutely nothing wrong with that player. Phenomenal uh, Hall of Fame, just waiting, right? Uh, right? Jersey in the rafters, all that jazz. So, you know, you look at maybe the depth of the draft class and you say, eh, maybe it's not as deep as, you know, other, other drafts have been. But when you look at a player like Patrick Marlowe, for instance, and that's a guy that got picked second, um, certainly, any one of these guys could potentially be in the same type of scenario uh, down the road in their career as well. Yeah, right. right. Um, hopefully there'll be some good players in this draft that, are, that come up a little bit later and, and will be Sharks staples in the coming seasons. They won't be here next year. Celebrini could be, but all the other players that they would pick, um, I don't think we'd see him for a season or two. So for the draft lottery, just kind of want to explain a few things a little bit here. We'll we get the, on the screen there. It's starting to go. Uh, we're not going to show you that because ESPN. Uh, but uh, so that you guys understand, uh, the Sharks have an 18.5% chance of winning the lottery. However, they do have a 25.5% chance of having the first overall pick. And the reason that is, is that the teams that can only move up 10 spaces, teams 12 through 16, uh, they can only get to picks two through six mm -hmm. at the highest. So if any one of those guys win, well, that extra percentage gets lumped into the Sharks basically getting that first overall. So, uh, yeah, so we're rooting for 12 through 16, right. or yeah. rooting for, for one, <laughs> right? right? So that's that's what we're aiming for here. So that's kind of how the percentage shake out. I know a lot of people were a little bit confused because it, it was saying 18 and a half and one, this yeah. is 25 and a half and another. That is the reason why. If you're far enough down the line and you win it, the first team uh, in this, that slot, retains their first overall pick. So that is the reason for that one. Um, anything else that we want to say about the, the draft order and all that stuff first? No, just um, it's an 18.5% chance of winning the lottery and right. then 25.5% of keeping the first overall right. pick. And so the worst that the Sharks can do is third. If two teams leapfrog the Sharks, uh, because it's they, you know they have the balls for the first overall and the second overall, so yeah. it could really only push the Sharks down to the third. Uh, so right. at worst, we're looking at a third and what fourteenth? Uh, no, when they get bumped down too, or no, they wouldn't get bumped no. down. The, the other guys would down. just jump ahead of them. Yeah, so yeah, at worst, the third and the fourteenth, two picks in the first round. Yeah. Could be, not bad. You know, yeah, exactly. Not bad. I, I'm more than happy with that. Considering all the years that we've had, I don't know, no first round draft picks, <laughs> um, to have two, especially in the first half, uh, certainly a welcome sight to see for Sharks fans alike. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say, the Sharks have, I believe it's for this draft, um, it's four picks in the first 50 guys. So oh, they're gonna, the second round, yeah. Of this, well, overall, like, yeah. two, they're going to get four of the top 50 prospects coming into the league, which is. Pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. Thanks to New Jersey's uh, pick from <laughs> Timo Meyer last year. Absolutely. And adding to an already growing uh, prospect pool, again, GM Mike Greer doing a great job. Was, I heard someone, uh, I can't remember what network it was on, but they were saying that it was a painful rebuild. And to me, a painful rebuild was Buffalo or the Ottawa of old, right? I mean, that was painful. And when they were trying to rebuild, and then they get their star player, Jack Eichel, right? And then right. it doesn't go well, and they have to trade him away, and they start that rebuild process again. That's a painful rebuild. Brutal, man. Right? That, that's just a constant rebuild. For the Sharks, <laughs> that wasn't really even a rebuild until Mike Rick got there. Like, they were still yeah. trying to pump out, okay, we're still trading our first. We're giving big contracts. We're signing big guys, right? We haven't really started to rebuild until Mike Greer got there. So has this been a painful process? No, it's been a losing process, absolutely. But has it been a painful rebuild? I can't agree with that necessarily, would you? Well, it's been painful to watch yeah. the last couple of seasons. But yeah, it's, I don't know what you consider not painful. I think it's been painful, and, and he's done it a different way. And, and again, I, I go back to this on the show. I like yeah. to say I want to compare how Chicago's doing it versus how the Sharks are doing it because Chicago did a complete fire sale and got rid of everybody at once, whereas the Sharks slowly deconstructed and got picks over time. Yeah. I think, I mean, maybe I'm because I'm biased and we're a shark show, but I think the Greer way <laughs> is going to be a little bit better because he's kind of got more of a long-term plan where Chicago is just like, let's wipe it clean and start over right now. Whereas he said, okay, methodically, we're going to take these pieces away. 
start adding cap space over time, especially in two seasons when the UFAs are going to hit the market. Really high profile UFAs. Um, they could possibly target two seasons from now as the date that they can go heavy in on some of those UFAs to complement the young guys that they're drafting now and all these picks that they're coming in and all the prospects that are coming in. Um, that Tomas Hurdle trade got Vegas' first round pick, but it also brought in Edstrom, who's going to be yes. maybe, I would, he's not going to be a top six guy, but he's going to be a pretty good bottom six guy um, for years to come. So there's a lot of prospects that are, that are in the pipeline for the Sharks and they're going to be better. And even the Barracuda in the next year or two are going to yeah. have some of those guys coming in. Yeah, and they're going to be really good and really fun to watch and also a much more affordable option for those people with families and stuff who want to go to those games and sit close and see the real um, young guys that are up and coming that will eventually graduate to the Sharks. But um, I'm very excited and I think that they're in a very good space right now. Um, I don't want to say better than Chicago, but I, I just, I mean, granted, Chicago won the Bedard sweeps, right. sweepstakes last year, yeah. and we'll see if they win Celebrini this, you know, how many people are going to cry oh, God. foul if oh, Chicago God. wins today. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I'll probably be one of them, to be honest with you. But no, uh, it's, come on. it's not, it's not, we know that, right? We know that there's no way they're going to rig this thing. And, and in fact, uh, Shang Peng, a good friend of the show, Shang Peng with San Jose Hockey now, he's actually there in New Jersey, correct? Correct. Yeah, he's so he's in the room. He's in the room. Yeah. Uh, locked away, Witnessing. leaded walls, and no cell phones and everything yeah. else. So he gets to see the whole process, and I guess he's going to have an article coming out uh, soon enough uh, yes. talking about that whole process and whatnot. So I think it would be interesting to shed a little bit of light on that because it's kind of mysterious. It seems kind of like, uh, I don't know, like California Lottery when the balls are bouncing through. You know, you that's think that's how it is, right? Kind so. of, but it's not, what is it, uh, there's a thousand combinations. Yes. The way they do it is is four balls. Four and balls they, with the four ball combination, and then, yeah. So if you yes. if you are the team that has that combination then you win the pick right yeah i'm pulling so. it up right now because i post someone had posted yeah. it and i love this explanation they did the whole math and showed everything on reddit on this reddit um thing i mean it's it's a lot it's for me can you see I've, that I've, it's yeah ridiculous. you don't need to go into great detail no but there's <laughs> just, there's four balls yeah and then the, of the combination of those four balls there's 1001 combinations so then from that they take every team gets a certain amount of combinations kind of like lottery tickets yeah. right and the NHL just posted today the actual lottery ticket combinations for each team so you can go see what they are, the actual combinations, which I thought was, I think it's fascinating. I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an accountant, go figure, right? Yeah. But um, I, I think it's really cool and um, it made me happy, and I posted this in our, in our fantasy league. Like, I was happy that Shang was there. It's kind of an outsider, a third party person coming in to witness the whole thing. I never thought that it was rigged, but at least this gives some credence to it and they have some outside people witnessing it and watching it so um, can't wait to see what Shang has to say about the whole ordeal now his I think the room was about the size of this room that he was locked in and they take your phones away and everything your computer's yeah. phone so you can't contact anyone until they finish this part of it so he is sitting there probably dying and knowing where the sharks already are and can't yeah. tell anybody about yeah. it <laughs> So if you're following along on uh, ESPN, you'll be, uh, you'll be able to see kind of the whole process. And we're going to be uh, here reacting to it. There's a gigantic screen that we can't show you. Uh, but if you were here live, uh, you did the smart thing and you showed up, uh, you'd be able to see that. Uh, but I'm going to be looking over Aaron's uh, yeah, shiny bald head over uh, to try to see what's going on over there from time to time. So don't mind me. Uh, but Aaron, obviously, again, Macklin Celebrini, kind of the the number one prize that everyone's after here, right? So uh, it was just kind of interesting that there are a few ties to the Bay Area with Macklin. And um, one of them was kind of eye-opening for me just because I have kids that play uh, and they're getting close to a certain age that we'll be talking about in just a second. But uh, Macklin's dad, Rick, is actually the uh, vice president of health and, what is it? Um, health and performance? Yeah. Yeah, so for the, for the Golden State Warriors. Right. Which obviously that, that tells you a whole lot about them as players with their conditioning and well he's a former soccer player yes. professional soccer player he played in Vancouver for a number of years so I yeah. think I believe he was born in Vancouver I think so yes yes um, so that checks out makes sense and, um, <laughs> but yeah he's his dad has been working for the Warriors for a couple of years so he, there was actually an article about it uh, a couple months ago where uh, Draymond Green and Celebrini are friends an unlikely kind of friendship but. Um, pretty cool, and, and they've, I mean, Celebrini kind of grew up and, and hanging around the, the team, so he knows those players really well. So um, it's funny to see outside of, outside other fandoms, 
uh, they're saying it's rigged in San Jose's favor because of this <laughs> connection to the Warriors. Which, right? Which, like every which, Sharks fans, they get right. Come on, makes rigged no towards the Sharks okay. <laughs> ever? Is anything rigged for the Sharks? No, I don't think so. so um, the Sharks only do things and then they create rules against it yeah. in the future. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, uh, it's funny to see what other people think. Every team thinks, every team's fans think that the NHL is against them. Yeah. Which, if that makes, if that, if that doesn't work, right? That doesn't compute. Right. I mean, what about Toronto's fans? They think that the NHL is against them, even though they can't get out of the first round to save their lives. And it's fantastic, by the way. Yeah, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, throw yeah. that out there. I love watching that streak continue. I think it's hilarious. They haven't been in the finals since 1967, I believe. As much as I up. don't like Boston, it's funnier to see Toronto 67, lose. 64? 67, right? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, as, as much as I don't like Boston, it's pretty funny to see that streak continue. Oh, so it's hilarious. I'm okay with it. Boston can get bounced in the second round, it's right. fine. Yeah. But it reminds me of like the Red Sox losing for forever, and the Cubs <laughs> losing forever, and it just doesn't doesn't end. So now, now think about it this way. If, if the NHL is against Toronto, you don't think the NHL would be for Toronto? Because you know what ratings gold that would be yeah, if Toronto yeah. would make it to the finals? Right. Everybody and their mother would want to watch that series. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. Um, uh, there's, there's no conspiracy here, and people need to take their tinfoil hats off, so yeah. uh, nothing is rigged here. Okay, and we're back. Yeah, <laughs> the applause, thank you. And we are back, apparently. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Hey, can I just, real quick, that's for Super Producer Jason. That's for you, buddy, the applause, okay? Super Producer Jason having a little bit of technical difficulties. Again, this He's isn't... He's sweating bullets <laughs> back there, trying to figure out what's going on. This isn't his normal, uh, the, the, the garage, if you want to call it, the, the set that we usually have, right? So he's doing right. the best he can. And uh, thank you, Super Producer Jason, for uh, getting us back up and rolling. Appreciate you, buddy. Hopefully, the stream is working for you guys a little bit better now. And Aaron, actually, aside from the, hey, are you guys having technical difficulties uh, comments, are there any <laughs> other comments to pull out uh, from, oh, from here before they really start getting going here. We have to, I just have to look over your head and pay attention to that. Uh, so. Pretty Good said, Celebrini has a dog named Callie. Let's keep our hopes up. His favorite basketball player is Steph Curry. Yeah. His dad works for the Warriors. If this is rigged, then we are the best team. It only makes sense. Sure. Um, uh, people just nervous and, and worried about, yeah. you know, it's, it's basically the Sharks they can lose the pick. They can't gain the pick. Right. So <laughs> Celebrini is here to, we're here to lose Celebrini. We have a one in four chance. One in four chance of getting him. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's the best odds out of anybody, yeah. but still, you have four cups with a ball underneath. Which one are you picking? It's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's rough. The it's odds rough. are not in your favor. So um, will this change the trajectory of the Sharks? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, it changes yeah. the trajectory. Of I mean, honestly, uh, when you inject, I know he's not Connor Bedard, okay, but right. when you inject yeah. a player with this level of talent into uh, your already growing prospect pool, it can only be good things. Um, and by all projections for everybody, every other analyst that's ever talked about him, um, he has always been the first overall. He is the consensus first overall. Everyone agrees on this. Uh, there is no uh, mucky waters there. Two through ten, it's you know, it's like a it's a wild farm of, of just opinions. So everyone's agreeing on this one. So when when it's one player that's standing out above the rest that far, um, yeah, absolutely, it, it's going to be somebody who changes your your franchise. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I I think it'd be interesting now too when you start taking a look at the rest of the prospects that the Sharks have, and once you get them one, two, three years into being on the team the way that they're gonna to gel together and the talent level that they're all gonna start uh, coming up with, right? Uh, I, I don't know, I'm very excited for the next couple of years of Sharks hockey. I think even next season will be uh, fairly interesting to see. You know, even like for the, the Chicago Blackhawks, right? Mm -hmm. They're terrible too, okay? But at least they have somebody <laughs> who's really fun to watch and I'm sure that they were selling out lots of games simply because he was there, right? So I think it could be the same level of excitement for Sharks fans, even though Celebrini may not be the same, like a, a Bedard clone, he's not quite on that no, level, no. right? Um, I think he's still, maybe not generational, but franchise changing, right? The comparison I've seen is Jonathan Taves yes. with a little bit more skill than Taves. Yeah. So uh, someone who's gonna be a leader on the team and um, I mean, Taves was a fantastic player. Was he a superstar player? No. but. I think Kane was that superstar yeah. player that complimented Taves very well. So um, imagine somebody like that, and then maybe we get you know a couple more prospects in, or even some high, high end free agents in yeah. uh, in two seasons to play with them. So um, the future is looking good, and even without Celebrini, I still think the Sharks are um, 
I still think they're going to be better next season than they were this season. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we have to be. All right. We I don't, have to be better. I don't think it's going to be a historically bad season. I don't. They're not going to make playoffs next year. They're not going to no. be competing. But no. I think um, more of the higher end of the of the bottom ten than the lower end of that team of that list of yeah. players. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, if you look at the, the process, the rebuild process, you look at what Mike Greer has done so far in his very short amount of time here. The prospect pool has looked so much better than it ever has. And yeah, I, th I do think that next season, we're not gonna be as bad as we were this season. And the season after that, we're gonna be a little bit better. And I think it just kind of keeps growing uh, to a point. Mm -hmm. But um, I think from here, that we talked about last season, um, is this rock bottom? And I know that that was a question <laughs> for Mike Greer, even from one of the media members, yes. is this rock bottom? And he goes, gosh, I hope so, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, so I, it's not even I hope so, like this, this to me is it, this is rock bottom. From here, the Sharks are getting better. They are rebuilding. They are injecting talent. Uh, they are getting not just young players, but good young players. Uh, ones who know what it's like to uh, you know, play in uh, these, these playoff games, these championship games, NC2A, uh, in the CHL, um, all those different things that they're doing. Um, I think that they're going to bring that experience in uh, with each other and kind of build off of that. And I'm very excited to see uh, what veterans the Sharks keep around. Right. You know, Nico Sturm, Mikhail Granlin. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, Sturm is coming back. Okay. I don't want to hear it. I don't think he's coming back. Come on, man. He's got um, one more year, right? Uh, he's got one more year. Yeah. I extend him. I don't That's think me. they're going to extend him. I think you should. I think he's going to move on. Drinking that haterade over here. Okay, I, so. I think they trade him at the <laughs> deadline. Because the team's going to want him. That's why. Yeah, a team may want him. I can see that. Yeah. But um, I, in other words, I, I just think that them having good uh, veteran leadership talent around these young guys is only going to help them grow uh, that much more. And once they get to the point where they don't need that leadership, they are that leadership core, um, watch out because this team's going to have a whole lot of talent all yep. at once. Yeah. So, okay. What else? All right. Um, I don't know. Just still working on the feed and making sure that it's working because some people. You're are working on the feed. Yeah, I'm working. Super producer right Jason, now. he's replacing you over here. <laughs> no, he's shaking his head. <laughs> no, he's not doing a thing. Okay. Um, now, if the Sharks do not get the first overall, you've got your ideas on who you think the Sharks ought to pick. If they don't get the first, if they overall, do not get the first. Overall. Um, yes, if they get the second overall pick. Yeah. Um, was it the Russian guy Demidov? Demidov. I'm gonna be terrible with these names, okay. by the way. But so will I. <laughs> uh, Demidov. I think that is. I mean, again, there's not really a consensus number two right. or three. Uh, it's kind of him and Levshunov. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, I think. I think. Um, I could go either way on one of those, but I think Dem Demidov. Oh, I'm just, that I'm one's just easy compared to Lashunov. Come on, man. Demidov, I yes. think, would be a higher priority than Lashunov, but he's he's kind of smaller, and and Greer okay. likes to have you know you have to be six four or higher to ride the ride at the Shams. Right. Shams, so, um, <laughs> we'll see if he likes him. Now there is that interesting prospect. But, right. Let me oh, real ahead. quick. Demidov, he's a right winger. Yes. So you think the Sharks should still go with a forward, another forward? I mean, at this point, you want the best player okay. available. I don't think they can. Yes, they need a defensive prospect. Even if we just said the for two through ten is a mixing pot of opinions, so who's the best player moving forward? To me, I you, think right? that player would be okay. would be Demidov. So okay. that's kind of I like. What about you? Would you for uh, second overall, if they got second overall pick. Yeah, if they got second, I'm actually I'm liking that Anton Silev. Silev. Yeah, I yeah. like him a lot. Uh, six foot seven, two hundred and something. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, six foot seven. Are you kidding me? This guy's a monster. He's huge, and he's got good skate, really good skating for his size. Excellent skating for his size. So uh, he hasn't hit the top league in in well, he hasn't hit the NHL yet, right? Right. He's gonna get better. Like his skating is going to improve, and he's gonna skate against better competition. It's gonna force him to get better. His skating is gonna be fantastic. I don't think we'd see him in the NHL for three, four seasons. Uh, I don't know about three, uh, four. Maybe two or three. Yeah, maybe two. He's gonna need to adjust to the ice here, which. And if we That's don't see him for two seasons, what does that put us on timeline with? Uh, yeah, Come on, yeah, say it, yeah. say it, say it. 20, Making the yeah, playoffs. Yeah. So I'm totally fine with that. If he wants to take some time off and play in the KHL or whatever it is, wherever he's at. Six foot seven rookie. Yes. To a playoff team. Yes. I, okay. I don't know. If you had to fight a bear, but the bear only had one year of experience, would you care? No, I'm running from that bear. That dude is six foot seven. He's a monster. I'm That's telling you. That's because you're 5'7". Well, whatever. <laughs> Hateful. There's no applause thing up here. They're not supposed to be <laughs> applauding and laughing. Super producer Jason. Um, yeah, that's. I think for me, I would go back to 
um, the Sharks could really use a very solid top tier blue liner. And if that's who they think is going to be that guy, that's the guy I would pick. Now, there's a couple solid defensemen here. Uh, Dickinson's one of them. Mm -hmm. Lev Shunov's another. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember. There was a one other defenseman that I cannot remember the name of. Um, oh, uh, Buyam. Uh, Buyam, he's a much smaller guy. He's more offensive. He's got yeah. a fantastic skating. Just won uh, the Frozen Four with Denver, mm -hmm. uh, and he stood out. Zeev Buyam. There are some Denver connections on the Sharks. There's a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just a couple. Jeez, so much. Huh? Well, there's a lot more Boston. Oh, and then Boston, yeah, 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 Boston's more, but anyway. Yeah. And I'm looking at the screen over here to see if anything's going on they've even so started, far. They've even done so far, they just have a graphic of a puck. Just a lot of commercial breaks so, from ESPN. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that is. All right. Um, okay, so how about some other comments or something else? I just want to try to fill some time before we have to do in this thing here. Sure, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to come up to the microphone. There's a microphone by the there. barrel if you'd like to Don't use be the shy. microphone. So. Devereaux, there you're you here. Come on. I'm expecting something big for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Devereaux's here. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah. How are you doing? So glad to be sitting Devereaux here. Devereux guest hosted while Paul was out a few times. I'm, so. I'm glad to be here and not be replaced. Right. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Never, uh, except twice. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Noah Claxton said, my attitude for the 25 season will be decided in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> That's yeah. Um, I did but post even if they don't get Macklin, okay, even if they don't get him, there's still a good crop of players. Right. There was know? a there was a great question on on Reddit earlier that I answered was, uh, what are the short term, uh, I guess medium term and long term projections for the Sharks if they do yeah. get Celebrini? And I said. Or, sorry, immediate, short-term, and long-term. I said immediate, season tickets are just going to skyrocket. Yeah, yeah, as, soon yeah. as, they, as soon as they draft him, season tickets are, or as soon as they do this, the season tickets are going to jump. Yeah. Uh, people are going to be excited. Uh, short-term, I think Sharks will be, uh, be going. Go ahead. So real quick, they're looking at who's going to get the 14th pick now. It's Pittsburgh is slotted to get it unless they moved up. Pittsburgh is the 14th pick. The Sharks will have that. Uh, there's no discussion about that one. So, yeah. Pittsburgh? Okay, okay, okay. Good, good. Uh, Mike Greer on the screen. There's Mike Greer on screen looking puzzled. I don't know. It's, it's, is he happy, guys? I don't know. He's thinking. He's thinking. Who can I pick at 14? Okay, so they're, they're looking at the uh, 13th pick now, and it's supposed to go to Minnesota, and it does. So oh, this is kind of boring, huh? I know. And then uh, the next one, but see, this is the last one that doesn't that has any consequence for us. So, so hopefully it is not. Who's hopefully it. Be? Okay, so Philadelphia did not win the lottery, so they're still in 12th. So at this point, if anybody wins, they can move up 10 spots. Again, the sharks 11 would lose the sharks would lose that. Now, there's still a chance that if you see a change, it's not the first. It could be the second. So the sharks could have won the first, and the right. change that you see in the order could be due to somebody winning the second. So if we see it out of order, don't freak out. <laughs> Just don't wait. Don't completely freak Just out. Don't, wait until we see the second overall pick, uh, and then we will know. So how are you feeling? Uh, a little nervous, a little nervous. guess, because yeah, okay. it's real now. It's They're fun. actually it's burning through these picks faster than I thought they were. They're actually running right through 11. Buffalo just retained uh, 11, so okay. they didn't move up at all. All right. Uh, and it looks like they're just keep, going to keep trucking, so we'll just keep talking about it here. Uh, pick number 10 stays with New Jersey Devils. That uh, that was one that if the if the, Jersey, the New Jersey Devils had gone to the Stanley Cup Finals would conference. have become or the Conference Finals would have right. belonged to San Jose, right? Right. Yeah. Or won the Conference Finals or go to San. I can't remember if it was win the Conference Finals or get to the make conference the finals. make the Conference Finals. And Meyer had to play half the games. Yeah. That was a condition. If they did that, then that pick it would have been 10, number ten. Well, it would have been number protected. 28, 29. Well, yeah, yeah, fair, fair, been, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, here we go. So now we're putting it up on, okay. the, on here. Oh, uh, Super Producer Jason Jesus with, oh, look at there. you. Oh, yeah. my goodness. He's got the whole pre-draft order. He's, He's putting it start up. start filling them in here. So that you guys can see it uh, on the stream if you're not watching on ESPN. Right. Uh, pick number nine stays with Calgary. Nothing moving there. So uh, Man, nothing's that's good. moving, huh? It's getting a little scary. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> it's getting real. Pick number eight. The room's getting a lot quieter yeah. right now. Seattle. It stays with breathing. Seattle. Uh, pick number seven for Ottawa. We're going to turn this one over and we'll see if Ottawa stays where they are. I'm hoping this continues to be the most boring draft lottery yes. ever. Yes, <laughs> yes. Ottawa stays at seven. Okay, all right, okay. Um, six, Utah. The Utah hockey team. That is the their Utah name right now. Team. The Utes. 
No. <laughs> Flips it, and it is Utah. Okay, okay, okay. Guys, you feeling nervous over there? Yes. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Fingers crossed. Hey, buddy, how you doing? All okay, right, five. Montreal stays with Montreal. Okay. And here they're probably going to take a commercial break because... <laughs> Rating's gold right now. Yeah, I know, right? All right, so the next four, by the way, are the same four as uh, the previous year. It's San Jose, Chicago, Anaheim, and Columbus, not necessarily in that order. But it is the same four that were the bottom four in the league uh, last season. So each one of these teams, horrible, and uh, looking, <laughs> looking to get better. Looking to get better. Constantly rebuilding, <laughs> yes. So, uh, and, and this is the way that you get your team to be better is building through the draft. A lot of guys will try to do, uh, you know, trading everybody away, picking up, uh, um, you know, high-end talent that way or right. going through a free agency. And you can get some gems in free agency and you can make some good trades and everything else, but this truly is the best way to build your team out is through this draft. Okay, number four um, stays with Columbus. Columbus. Okay. Oh man. Well, no, San Jose oh, lost. <laughs> Number three is Anaheim, so we're going to see. Uh, oh, please be a They dog. got Mike Greer, Kyle Davidson from uh, Chicago, and Pat Verbeek from Anaheim. Uh, all the three GMs are staring at the camera right now. Uh, there's uh, Macklin so Celebrini right there, baby faced assassin, kind of like Steph Curry. Looks a little bit like me. I shaved for you guys. San Jose is your home. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody here is going, San Jose is your home, buddy. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, so I think they are taking a commercial break, right? Of course. Yeah, they are? are. Of course. Yeah, okay, of course. okay. Uh, okay, so thus far, to recap, Picks four through 16 have been set and there has been zero movement whatsoever. <laughs> Aaron's laughing at something. It's probably a, a message, I'm so laughing. go ahead. No, I'm not. I'm just, did they even do the lottery? Or was it just like... <laughs> oh, did they? How does it, how does it made it right before? Nothing, nothing moved then, so... Yeah, so yeah. nothing has moved, right? Uh, yeah, and that makes sense because we talked about, you know, all the percentage chances of, you know, the top teams. It's only a quarter of a percent. Well, the fourth team is like, what, 7%? Yeah. It's pretty low. So the odds of them winning in this draft, uh, very, very low. Thankfully, again, the Sharks do have the best odds out of anybody left. How about we do this? Let's do a yeah. roll call. Go ahead. Let's do a roll uh, call. Roll call. Tell us where you're watching from, what city you're watching from, and... Uh, tell us where you think the Sharks are going to land, one, two, or three, yeah. before they come back from break. So, it, by, it, by a show, a round of applause, okay, for, do you think that the Sharks are going to end up with the third overall pick? Oh, smart people. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, do you think they'll end up with the second? Oh, man, there's so, yeah, some, okay, first, who's, who, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, positive energy, right? You got to, got to have it, bud. <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's so pessimistic. Too, he's like, too many years of disappointment. Like, I don't want to be years. disappointed. I don't want to get my hopes up. The entire season, that was your mantra. I don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> Burned too many times by this team. Yeah, it's so true. We'll see. Truly. Um, I'm just kidding. I hope they get first. No, of course. Of course we hope they get first. Yeah. I don't know, guys. So, okay. Uh, where are people watching from, and what do they think? Uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for that to come okay. in here. So... Um, you guys will start going. Slow. When you're typing, I guess. Let's see. Budo Dojo is in Toronto. Oh. Sharks land number one. We have some international people. There's some people from Sweden in here earlier. Really? Yeah. Nice. Um, I think the time change being earlier here is oh, okay. helping with the East Coast people for sure. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. I think we'll post those up. I don't know if Jason has the graphic for that or not. But. Okay. Uh, Ron Spittler's in San Diego. Um, in a stunning upset, the Sharks will end up with a 17th overall pick. <laughs> no. Come on. Vince, uh, Vince over here just doing quotes from movies. Here's a question for you. Yeah. There's Baltimore. The Sharks, boating accidents from Baltimore. If the Sharks end up with two or three, do they do the Graham special and trade down? That's what I was thinking. I was going to say that earlier. I wouldn't be shocked if they did that. But the question is, who's got the picks in the orders that they want, right? I mean, maybe they move down two spots because they yeah. know a team. Or a team wants to yeah, jump yeah, in and yeah. they know they want to get their guy. Oh, um, boy. Okay. Uh, Macklin Salabrini. He's only 17 years of age, by the way. Very, very young guy. Uh, youngest Hobie Baker winner, I believe, is what yeah. they said. Yeah. And one of the younger ones in the draft. Um, it's oh, weird. Number three. He was, he was a freshman. Here comes number three. Who's it going to be? Ducks. 
Anaheim Ducks. So they have the number two. So yeah, minimum number two. The worst the Sharks can pick now is second. It comes down to Chicago, of course, because it would. And the San Jose Sharks, Mike Greer, sweating bullets, uh, looking like Super wanna, Producer Jason right now. I don't want to see Mike Greer cry. Now this is for the first. Whoever this is is the first. First overall pick. Will it be? There you go. Oh my God. Watch your step. <gasps> I can't believe it. <sighs> Mac oh, and Celebrini, yeah, man. Oh. Needed that. That's huge, man. You know what's funny? <laughs> Zero teams moved during this. Didn't That's they? nuts. There's not one team that moved. That is bonkers. So it was all. As bonkers as I just went. Right. Crazy. Are you okay? You I gotta that? breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I need a sip of something. I'm gonna say, I think we're gonna need some drinks Goodness there. Goodness gracious, I might I have to get some it. champagne after this. Oh, I'm shaking right now, people. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. All right, Hopefully so. you enjoyed that. <laughs> now that that's out of the way. Yeah. Who are the Sharks gonna draft? Oh, God. <laughs> Do they trade down? <laughs> oh, man. Macklin. No, no. Macklin Celebrini, San Jose They Sharks. now have a, a gem prospect. Meant to be. In, in their pipeline. Do we do we see Celebrini next year? I think you do. Yeah? I think you do. I think you see Macklin show up and deal next do, year. Who, do you think Will Smith is going to sign yes. now with the yes. Sharks now that Celebrini 100%. is playing? Yep. Well, there's possibility. I, I, yeah. I think you start seeing a lot of guys that were, are high-end prospects that the Sharks are going, you know, I think he's on the cusp. I think he's ready. I think you start seeing a lot of those guys looking real good in training camp. Real good. They're going to get motivated. This Absolutely. Is, this is a, a huge deal for the San Jose Sharks. It's I mean, massive. Obviously, the first first overall pick after they got yeah. kind of screwed over by the league with Eric Lindros, but that's neither <laughs> here nor there. Um, the uh, this is this is amazing. It's bitter. I'm still kind of shocked. Right yeah, my <laughs> my hurt goes deep. It goes deep way back. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Will Smith is going to be signing with the Sharks. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Maybe we hear it this week. Yeah. Maybe, you know what? He's, he's playing in the... What tournament is it? He's playing in um, a tournament coming up for USA. Think. Team USA. He's going to be playing with Cunnan. Yeah. Um, but uh, after that, maybe he signs after that. Yeah. Because maybe the Sharks don't want to take on that risk if he gets injured. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. That's terrible. That's oh, my terrible. Man. It is terrible. No, uh, uh, yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking we see a pretty solid young crop making this team next season. I'm very excited for the future of the San Jose Sharks. They got Macklin up there right now. He's talking. You can't hear what he's saying because we don't have the audio on, but he's smiling, and I promise you he's very happy to be in the Bay Area, right? He's right next to mom and dad. Yep. And his and, and brothers, he's got. I, I didn't know this. Aiden Celebrini, a sixth round draft pick last season for Vancouver, and I guess he ended up playing with Boston uh, with his little brother uh, this last season. Oh that's yeah, what they were saying in college. I, I missed yeah. that altogether. Oh, that's cool. I knew he had a brother. I, did, I yeah. knew he got drafted. I, I believe he has a younger there. brother too. We're not going to talk about him because he's awesome too. But um, <laughs> better than Mac. We don't know. But wouldn't it be nice, uh, right, if we had some brothers on the team? Well, I'm just saying. The new Hughes family. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I'm uh, obviously excited. Uh, I'm so happy for the San Jose Sharks. I'm happy for this fan base. We've put up with a lot. We've been through a lot. And for this little teeny tiny win of getting a first overall uh, for the first time ever in franchise history. I can't um, believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, perfect quote right here from Mercedes BMW Porsche. Great name. Okay. Uh, I bet they drive a Jeep. Makes these horrific season all worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. This, this, oh, it, it's been a terrible season. Last, I mean, the Sharks haven't made it in five seasons now. But um, yeah, seeing the deconstruction, this Mike Greer status with the Sharks as the GM, I think yeah. is just going to shoot up. Because, Absolutely. Um, wow. And, and again, it wasn't like he didn't do anything. It wasn't but luck like, either. Yeah. Or I mean, luck like he got was the eighth 
right. eighth place and won the draft yeah, yeah, lottery yeah. or something yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, uh, well done. By the way, I just want to let you guys know that if you could have made it out here, you should have. They're cracking <laughs> champagne right now. Everyone's here. Yeah, hey. Oh, we got oh, the spray yeah. going on. All right. Yeah, there you go. He's shaking that bottle off like an F1 nice. winner over here, nice. buddy. There you go. Looking like Max Verstappen. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, just another thanks to Angora yes. Vino for uh, for hosting us here today. Absolutely. And it looks like we might be doing this again in the future now that it's becoming a tradition. Yeah. So maybe during the season we'll be doing some viewing parties here. I, I uh, hope it's not a tradition because I don't want us to be this bad all I the time. I didn't mean the draft okay. or the lottery. All right, good. I meant through the season. Yeah, good. We'll be here. Good, so good. keep okay. an eye out for that. We'll figure that out and pass that along to you when we know. Fan. Fantastic. Again, thanks again to Ancora Vino uh, here in the littlest Little Italy. That's right. Uh, beautiful downtown San Jose. Uh, and thanks again to everybody who came out <laughs> to the live viewing. First ever live viewing uh, of the Fin Factory show. We've done live shows before, but it's live right. to just a camera. I think it's we've very had, different having it with actual people here. At maximum, one other person in the studio. Yeah, because Debbie. there's no room in there <laughs> at, at all. Oh, Debbie and 3G. They're, and they're, 3G, yeah, yeah, yes. Craig, Craig was there one Craig time. So, okay. um, yeah, I mean, Devereaux's been there as a host, and you've seen how small it is in, the, in our <laughs> So spacious, yeah. Spacious for us, but everyone else, uh-uh. Off camera, there's no room at all. All so right. this is really cool. Is um, any last comments or anything else you want to? You know? oh, just let's go. Does anyone want to take the microphone and go on there yeah, and say anything? Any, Feel well, free. Uh, Mike, say something or have a question or anything like that. No. No. Everyone's too shy. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just. Okay. Yeah. Or just yeah. Shout Mike's it right there. You can go right up there. Hey, uh, who are we drafting with number fourteen now? That's a good question. Yeah, so um, that is going to very much depend on what the other uh, teams decide they want for themselves. Because a lot of these guys that are uh, slotted to go in like that 8, 9, 10 might not be on these other guys' boards and they might go past them. So it could be that a guy that was supposed to go at like 8, 9, or 10 is going to be available at 14. I wish we had Graham here for that too because he could really go and drill His down on some of these guys. His list is very different than, I mean, everyone's list yeah. is very different. So these prospects outside of Celebrini are just all over the map. And remember, Cole Iserman, this is how much guys can fall. Cole yeah. Iserman was slotted at number two a long time ago. All of a sudden, he's down in like the tens and teens, <laughs> right? So can you imagine if there was uh, Cole Eiserman still available because he just kept falling. Right. Now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right? Can you imagine the Sharks picking up Macklin Celebrini and Cole Eiserman? I mean, draft, what I'd right? like I mean, to see them do is get a defenseman. Assuming yes. there's a good, uh, there's not a difference of like, you know, taking a fifth defenseman versus a number two winger or something yeah, like yeah. that at that point. It kind of depends on what other teams are going to do and who they're going to take. Um, I don't know what the Sharks board looks like because everyone has their own board and, and their favorites and I'm sure they're all, you know, meeting about it right now. Now they know where the chips fell for both their their pick and the Pittsburgh pick. Um, but uh, man, this this draft is going to be awesome. Also, the Sharks just announced today. I don't know if you saw this, but they are doing a draft party like they did last season. No, oh. at the arena. Yes, and you can get your tickets. Um, I think if you go to the Sharks website, it's on Ticketmaster. I don't know if it costs anything. I can't remember if it did. It might be like five bucks or something, but. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. Okay. It's cool. We went last year, yeah. and well, we might be there again. I haven't uh, contacted the Sharks yet about it, but last year we were posted up um, at there, and it was really cool. The ice isn't done yet, so it's cement. Yeah. And they, it's open. Like, so you can go on kind of the ice level, and they have a bunch of games and a bunch of stuff for families, and they play the like what we we're doing. They have yeah. the draft live on the big screen, and everyone's you know having a good time. And, and then when the picks come in, I mean, they're going to have two. Um, and the way the draft works is the first round is one day. So the very first day, and that's when the party is, is just for the first round, and the Sharks have two picks for it, which is great. Yeah, yeah. And then picks are, uh, rounds two through seven are the next day, which they don't do anything for. So it's this just for the first round. Um, and obviously it's gonna be a big party because we yeah. know they're gonna be picking first over yes. on getting Celebrini. <laughs> so uh, fantastic, it'll be fun. And uh, I don't want to say we'll be there for sure, but I'm pr I'm positive we will be there. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to say for sure. We but need I'm to like we need we'll to plan there. it out with the Sharks and yeah. make sure that they, that we have a space like we did last. I year. have a feeling they'll welcome us to right. to that. So just and last year was fun because we had who do we have on? We had Dan Boyle on. We had uh, Scott Hannon. Scott Hannon, uh, and Doug Bentz, the chief marketing yes. officer. Um, was there one more? I thought there was Murray one. wasn't there. Um, there's somebody else I'm missing. And I 
I'm sorry, and I will remember it later. I forget. And put it in the comments down below, yeah. like you should be doing right, uh, right now. So there you go. Um, any last bits here? Oh, yeah. What do you do about the coaching situation now? Yes. Coach, or do you want like a new kind of... Uh... So for for me, um, well, the question was what we do for a coach because yeah. you need another microphone. Just repeating it. Go oh, ahead. sorry. Yeah, yeah he, he would like to know what we do uh, for for a coach going forward. Um, for for me, the firing of David Quinn was less about he's not a competent coach and more about it makes sense when you're bringing in all this young talent to start off with a coach that starts with them. Right. Um, if you've got a coach in David Quinn, he lasts one more season and then you let him go. You've got all these kids that are learning his way of hockey and then having to unlearn that with the next coach. So to me, it's sorry, just the mic for me. It just made sense um, to to go with a new coach, regardless of kind of who it is to go with a new coach uh, with that new crop of young talent. Now, who are they going to take? That's the big question. And we've had uh, a lot of discussion about this on a previous show. And it's funny because you brought up a name that all of a sudden everybody else brought up after the fact. Thank you. I'm not Thank patting you. him on the back. It's more on the shoulder. But who is that guy? Former Shark Nico Sturm. Who, no, uh, Marco Sturm. Marco Sturm. Nico Sturm yeah. is currently, I always mix up. You know, currently a player who will get extended 7x7. Seven seven, you heard it first. <laughs> I always laugh because during the show I'm always like, it's Nico, it's Nico, it's not Marco, it's Nico. Um, Marco Sturm, who did coach the German national team, and then he's been in the system with the LA Kings. Yes. He's an assistant coach. Coach. Now he's been coaching their minor league, head coaching their minor league team, the Ontario Reign. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to say Syracuse. That was the wrong one. Um, I think he's going to be in the running. And I th and I can't remember. I have to go back and look. But I'm pretty sure he was interviewed for the job when Quinn oh. came in. So he's already kind of been in the fold with Greer and, and in the interview process before. Um, but I think getting that head coaching experience for the last two seasons with the AHL team and having success yeah. is going to be a big part of it. And having major success with Team Germany because they won a silver medal and they were a surprise team. Um, and to go hand in hand with that in two years, there's going to be a certain free agent hitting the market that happens to be a German national, Leon Dreisaitl, playing for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, that would be enormous if the Sharks... I mean, Edmonton, there's still a chance Edmonton could sign him, obviously, and, and extend him starting after July 1st of this year, they can sign an extension. Right, but if they don't sign an extension, that is gonna be the major story, I yes. think, all season. Every reporter, everyone's gonna ask, every every post game, yes. asking the team, when is Dreisaitl gonna get extended? Yes. Is he gonna get extended? Absolutely. And blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's a terrible, I hate, I hate it for Leon Dreisaitl if he's not gonna sign because it's just gonna be a pain to deal with all season. But I'm also hopeful that he signs with the Sharks in two seasons from now, because that would be amazing. I think the level of success he's having with Connor McDavid, I don't think he hits the free agent market. But hey, fingers crossed. And if anything, I don't know, if man. having uh, Marco Sturm as a head coach uh, helps bring in that talent, okay. look at I'm cool with it. Look but, at Toronto. Toronto's like yes. big. Was it big four, big three? San Jose is not Toronto. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Edmonton. <laughs> yeah, they have Marner, they have Matthews, and they have Nylander, right? They're not getting it done. Now, go to Edmonton. They have McDavid and Drysaddle. They're not getting it done if they lose again yeah. in the next round because they just won this round. If they yeah. lose again and they can't get past that second round, do you think the team's going to want to blow it up and say, you know what, not blow it up, but maybe we should go in a different direction and let Drysaddle walk? Kind of like how Toronto is now in a predicament of what are they going to do because, for one, they're over the salary cap and they have some free agents coming up yeah. and Marner and Tavares. Mm -hmm. So it's not out of the question that Dreisaitl could hit the free agency market. And the Sharks just so happen to have a German national team coach and a lot of cap space and a lot of money that can get spent by a very generous owner who goes all the way to the cap. What? I said we have Teskies right there. We have Teskies Germania right here down the street. You'll feel at home. Oh, God. Perfect. <laughs> There's a free plug for Teskies. <laughs> um, yeah. But you, you, you think, I think you've been playing too much NHL 24. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Straight GM mode over here. I love it. Uh, Just some food for it, that. Look, man. look. If it happens, uh, then you heard it here first. And I certainly did not see it happening. That means so. you'd have Dreisaitl as your number one center, and you'd have Will Smith slash Celebrini as your number two. Probably one of them playing a wing. Playing wing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a pretty good team right there. Pretty, pretty good top six. Okay, there you go. So uh, if you're not a Sharks fan right Quentin now. Quentin Musty. 
You do it wrong. This is the time to jump on the bandwagon of the Sharks. Getting the first overall pick. The we got heated look seats. So different. No, we don't. We and we don't? We got ventilated seats. We don't have those what? either. I don't know. The bandwagon. It's a pretty bad bandwagon. It doesn't have uh, I thought you were talking about in the arena. No, I meant on the bandwagon. <laughs> Jump in, you said. Got it. Got it. Okay. Sorry, my friend's a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. I think, are we done? Or any other last questions? Stuff? No? I think they just want to get the champagne. <laughs> How about you? What, you got a so. question or a comment on No, that? I'm just reading some of the comments and catching up in here. Did my dad uh, get it figured out yet? Uh, my dad's in I there think, he's I like, he how left. come it's the stream's not working? <laughs> <laughs> I think he left. Sorry, he doesn't sound like that at all. I just, <laughs> yes, he does. I love it. <laughs> hey, you watch your mouth, Adam. <laughs> Sick of you. Uh, uh, Travis McLean, Montana representing. So oh, cool. Montana watching. Uh, Travis is also in the fantasy <laughs> The draft is not rigged. Who said that? <laughs> is that Anthony? Uh, Anthony said yeah, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, he also said Joel Ward for the next coach for the Sharks. It's yeah. another one that's in the yeah. running. That's another, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Bri Jones just asked, so does winning the lottery confirm Smith signs? I think so. Yeah, he, Aaron had said that um, earlier. Yeah, we think, uh, we think we'll start seeing some of these guys, these hiring guys. Yeah. Why, why stay in the NCAA? No, nah, I don't think year? he wants to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he stays. All right, okay. Any other questions from anyone else? Good. Yeah. Oh. Any chance that Musty makes the roster? Uh, question was, any chance that Musty makes the roster? It's Jeff, who's normally in the comment section. Yeah. He's in person, yeah. live and in person. Yeah. Um, I think, even before this, I thought he was going to have a very good chance of making the roster. Yeah. Now, it's going to depend on his camp and whatever else, but I think he is. What does he have left to prove in the OHL He's going to kill it in camp, I'm telling you. He's already killing the OHL. That's what I'm saying. He's hungry. Like, the OHL is like, or all the other teams in yeah. the OHL are like, I hope he makes it in camp because we don't want to play against yeah. him. This guy's a beast. Yep. So I'm hoping that he makes the team. And I'm, I'm I mean, I don't want to say it's a, it's a given. It's not, nothing's a given. He has an opportunity to make the team. And I think he has a very good chance of doing so. Yeah. He, I, I, he's probably one of my favorite prospects, yeah. even yeah. more he so is. than Will Smith. Yeah. He's a beast, man. He's yeah. just going to. Even Celebrini. Celebrini, you know what you're going to get. Musty, I think, is kind of a wild card here and uh, should not have gone, was it 24th overall? Yeah, he's pretty that draft? Yeah. That's 26? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he should have gone probably 10 picks earlier than that. So uh, the Sharks are very lucky to get him. And another name you guys are going to want to remember, Quinton Musty. He's yeah. going to be a beast. Um, anything else? Sorry. Any other questions? Anyone? No? 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 Cool. Good? Okay, right. again, thank you so much uh, to Ancora Vino. Uh, yes, in the littlest Little Italy. Yes. <laughs> it sounds so weird to say that. Well, there's a, there's Is a there section. Is there a bigger Little Italy? There's a section called Little Italy. Okay. This whole com, this building, because yeah. there's multiple things in this building, is Littlest Little Italy. Okay, so it's smaller than Little Italy. Correct. Got it. That's why Littlest. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah. So thanks again for providing uh, the the venue. Thanks again to everybody for coming out and supporting us uh, for the first live show. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks again, as always, to everybody who's on the stream uh, in the yes. comments live. We appreciate you guys. Um, and thanks again to Super Producer Jason. Everybody, give it up. Phantom <laughs> Animal. He's the Quentin Musty of producing. He's a beast. Dude, that guy uh, a towel for all the sweat. Oh, I need to get him a towel. This yeah. poor guy looks. You're shiny. <laughs> My goodness. Shinier than me. Um, yeah, Super Producer Jason. Uh, we had a little trouble with the stream earlier. Uh, he's always on point, cleaning things up, fixing us up, and of course the lighting and everything going on around, around us. Uh, that's all him. We just sit here and talk. So uh, thanks, thanks much. so much for making us uh, look good. Right. And uh, congratulations again to the San Jose Sharks and Mike Greer on uh, getting the first overall pick for the first time in franchise history and to Macklin Celebrini for not having to move very far. <laughs> <laughs> good? Good. Done. This has been episode 212. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And for Super Producer Jason, we will see you guys at the draft. At the draft. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.